Um, I'm Kate Dalzell. I'm the head of Cork, the Child Outcomes Research Consortium. And conscious of time, we're going to be um, really uh, brief in using this space to think about how we bring outcome measures into the um, online context um, and about the relevance of, of goals here. And Duncan and I, when thinking about this, thought that what would really be helpful would be to kind of boil this down and make it simple enough that there's a sense that you can focus in a manageable way on what's really important about doing this. Um, and of course, it's as important to uh, use feedback and outcome monitoring tools um, when you're delivering remotely as it is face to face for responsive care and for us to improve our work and services. But there's particular reason to do it um, and to get feedback and monitor how the work's going if there's a change in the way you're offering support. Um, and the principles here are really uh, exactly the same um, as they would be face to face. Um, and that's about being relevant and making sure that you're um, using a questionnaire or feedback measure that's meaningful to you and to the young person that you're working with. And that that's integrated in your work in such a way that you're um, responding to and using feedback that's shared. And of course, for them to feel safe to use those tools, um, that transparency about what you're asking for and why. And I know it can feel a bit technically daunting to transpose what was often hard copy or involve quite a lot of back office for some services into your work online. Um, but there are kind of basically three approaches you can take. Either it gets completed at the service user's end, so you send them something which they download, maybe they print it, complete it and photo, uh, photograph it and send it back, or perhaps they can edit it in Word, um, but it gets emailed, they do it at their end. Or you might be doing it in a shared electronic space if you've got access to something like that. Um, so that would be um, an interface like Pod, or you might think about um, another kind of shared system, which would be akin to kind of uh, uh, Dropbox and SharePoint. Services have all different kinds of interfaces with different levels of integration, but that would be the service user and practitioner able to access complete save measures in, in that shared space. And the third way in, um, which can be the kind of simplest if you're constrained, is that you do it verbally and the service user shares their response, you do it together in the session and the practitioner records and saves those answers. And that works particularly well um, if you uh, can share screens. So it's just bearing in mind what infrastructure your service user is comfortable with, making sure that if you're going to send or store personal sensitive data that it's going to be secure. Um, keep an eye on copyright if you think you're going to reproduce a questionnaire somehow, but most importantly be driven by what allows you to have a meaningful conversation in your session about the feedback that's being shared with you. So our kind of top tips really are do keep this simple, stick with something which can be meaningful, integrated and relevant. If you're changing your service, do consider using a different measure if that's going to help you. It might have made sense to use a long measure before, now it might just be much easier to use something brief and there's plenty of great validated briefer measures out there. Um, do use the exact language in the questionnaire because if you adapt the questionnaire or you don't ask the questions as they're designed to, then you don't know that it's a reliable or valid way of measuring what you're intending to measure. And I know that can feel clunky at first if you're using it verbally. And so I think our last top tip is just please experiment, test things out, um, have a go with a friend or colleague. This can be done in a, in a simple and meaningful way. Um, and uh, hopefully to the benefit of, of everybody in fact. Um, so there's loads more guidance and resources um, and tools on our website at www.cork, is that coming up now? <laughs> UK.net. Um, we are actively gathering learning as well and experience from services so we'd love to hear from you and we hope that you'll find useful all the stuff we've got online. Goals are a particularly helpful tool in this context, I think, easy to integrate. And so uh, Duncan Law, uh, esteemed colleague, is going to reflect a bit on that now, I think. Thanks, Kate. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk very briefly about the goal based outcome tool uh, as an example of a tool that's very easy to use and helpfully used uh, online uh, or over the phone. Um, it's, it's a tool that doesn't require any fancy infrastructure to use it uh, in a therapeutic setting. 
Um, it's licensed under a Creative Commons license, which means it's free for everyone to use forever. You don't need to worry about licensing to use it or to build it into uh, your um, uh, IT system. Uh, the guidance is downloadable for free uh, from uh, uh, goalsintherapy.com. Uh, and there's lots more information about the tool there. Uh, and uh, Kate's absolutely right about with some tools you need to use, if you're reading the tool out, you need to use verbatim language. The goal-based outcome tool uh, isn't one of those tools. So uh, why track goals online? Well, uh, it's harder sometimes to uh, use outcome measures if we're working virtually. Uh, but if we can only measure one thing or it's only possible to measure one thing, then I think it's really important that what we keep track of is whether we are helping children, uh, young people and families with the make progress towards the goals that they feel are most important to them. Uh, and the goal based outcome tool, it's a client defined outcome measure, so it's the young person or parent who are defining what they want to see change in by working with uh, with you and your colleagues. Um, next slide, please. Um, it's easily used online. The, uh, the guidance is uh, about the sorts of things that you might say. So once you have agreed a goal, uh, which is a, a deceptively simple thing to say, it's an incredibly sophisticated thing to do clinically to agree goals with a young person or parent. But once you've agreed that goals, you can say something like, so taking your first goal on a scale from zero to 10, where 10 means that you fully reached your goal and zero means you haven't even begun to make progress towards it. And a score of five is exactly halfway between the two. Today, what rating would you give your current progress towards this goal? You don't have to use that exact language. The important thing is it's a scale from 0 to 10. 10 is that you've fully reached your goal. Zero is you've made no progress. And the anchor point of five is important as well. Uh, but this can be read out online. Uh, you can use the goal rating sheet here, which you could fill out yourself. A young person could fill it out themselves at their end. Or you can just use any piece of paper, frankly, with uh, 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 the numbers 0 to 10 written down on it. Um, as people have said, uh, working in this way is probably more unusual for us than it is for young people, uh, that they grew up in the digital world. Uh, um, and so working online may be less problematic than we might imagine. Um, and the other thing for me is if we are showing young people that we are listening to what their goals and intentions are, that we're demonstrating that in quite a concrete way by writing it down and by you could hold the rating sheet back up to the young person to show that you've got it right and to show that you've uh, uh, listened to what how they would rate their progress towards their goals. For me, it's a sign that we are showing intention to mentalise with that young person, that we want to connect with them uh, in a way that is sometimes more difficult online, where eye contact is more problematic, where there may be a delay on the line, so we might be showing verbal cues which don't quite match with the young person's uh, what they've said. Um, uh, by showing and rating goals and writing them down and rating them, it does show that we are uh, acknowledge that the young person has an agency and that we're wanting to connect with them. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so finally, uh, if you want more information, there's more information about using uh, the goal based outcomes tool and the guidance notes and the tool itself can be downloaded there. Uh, one more click, that's it. And then there's uh, more information about all sorts of tools on the goal on the uh, Cork website, including a specific page about using the goal based outcome tool and embedded in that page are some examples of uh, videos of using the goal based outcome tool, uh, not online, unfortunately, uh, but the principles are still the same, whether you're using it like online or face to face. I'm going to end uh, with a quote, not from a, an esteemed academic, but from uh, my six year old neighbour who I hear playing out in the garden 
uh, a lot uh, as I'm working from home, uh, who does a lot of positive self-talk when he's uh, playing. Uh, and I really like this quote, which he says often to himself, uh, which is encouraging. So he says, uh, are you ready for action? Uh, we can do this. I can do this. One, two, three, go. And with that, I'll hand back to Steve.